Sheridan, I wish I had waited like you. You're so close, don't give up now. I wish I had waited like you. And she told me a story of how she had grown so tired of waiting for the man that God was preparing her for that she settled and she hooked up with a guy. Um, and like right after that hookup, she ended up meeting her husband and she carried the regret of that hookup into her relationship with her husband. Hello, hello. Okay, so today's video is gonna be pretty real for you guys. I swear I never in a million years thought I would make videos about this kind of stuff when I started my YouTube channel, but here we are. Okay, we're gonna talk about what I am doing to prepare for a Christian marriage. Funny story, a while back, I may have been, <clears throat> I may have been in the middle of choosing to make a five-year vow of singleness where I was going to just give all my time to Jesus and not think about marriage. Well, you know, we can have great ideas, but there's that verse that talks about man makes his plans, but God orders his steps. Anyways, right after I had decided, yep, I'm going to make a five-year vow of singleness. I'm just going to go hard after God in this season. God sent five women to me back to back to back, like when the, within a few days of each other, to tell me this same message point blank. Um, the first person that approached me was basically like, Sheridan, God's been putting you on my heart for a few months. And I felt like he wanted me to tell you that this is your season to get ready to get married. And then the very next day, someone said, Sheridan, I've been praying for you several months now. And I feel like God is saying, this is your season to get ready to get married. And then like the next day, the next day, the next day, it, it just kept on happening. And after the first person said it, I was like, God, is that you? Because like, here I am trying to make a singleness vow. And this person tells me something very different from that. And it's funny, um, like shortly after this person said this to me, I was on the road, I was on a road trip. And I was just driving down the highway thinking, could that seriously be you? And I looked off to the side at an exit sign on the highway and it said, husband drive. That was the name of the exit. I'm like, well, that's interesting. Yeah, so women in my life kept coming up to me, like family members and spiritual mentors of mine saying about the same thing. And like right in the middle of that, I started seeing 1111 everywhere on repeat several times a day, every day, as well as other numbers on repeat. Like I just started seeing these very weird things. I'd be looking at my phone and it would say 1111, or I'd be walking down the road looking at houses and oh, that's like a house number 111. I just started seeing things that I'm like, okay, I feel like God's trying to get my attention. So lo and behold, I get the message. It is not a time to do a five year vow of singleness. It is a time to get ready for marriage. One of my friends who's a bit farther along in her season is married with children. She just encouraged me to treat this like a season of Esther in the Bible, who was going through beauty treatments and really intentionally preparing herself to go before the king. So the very first thing, I'm going to tell you eight different things I have done or I am currently doing to prepare to get married. Um, the very first thing I did was I set aside time to fast and pray. And um, there's just something about saying, God, I really don't know how to prepare, but you do. So I'm going to consecrate myself to you in this season, and I'm going to be very intentional about seeking you. So at least a few times over the last year, year and a half, I have set aside specific time to fast and pray, not just about general things, but specifically about marriage and family and preparing myself to be the wife and mother that God has called me to be. And when I would fast and pray, I would just sit before God, I would wait on him, and I would ask him, how can I position myself in this season? And what can I do to prepare myself? And um, I feel like God gave me a number of things specifically to do, which I'm going to get into next. Um, but he began confirming to me that this was indeed the season he had me in. I have had so many dreams over the last 18 months about getting married and 
Um, God, God has just really told me like, yeah, this is the season. Just embrace it for what it is. So the first thing I felt like he told me when I was fasting and praying was to get my finances in order. Um, I am 27 years old. Uh, I went through undergrad and grad school very young, but I came out with some student loan debt. And so I've been just paying those off over the last, I don't know, four or five years. But I've been trying to be really diligent in the last year and a half about getting debt free. And I'm so excited because recently I just finished paying off my student loans and I have one tiny loan left and I'm a matter of months from um, having that fully paid off. So I'm less than a year out from being 100% debt free, which is really exciting because debt just holds you back. I mean, I have friends who are just called to the mission field or to ministry, but but debt has really been a hindrance. So what I would encourage you is make sure your finances are in order. And not just being debt-free, but look at your spending. Are you saving? Are you investing? Are you giving into the kingdom of God? Or is most of your finances going towards like food and shopping and things like that? Make sure you're telling your money where it's going to go and not just spending frivolously. Okay, so this one might be cliche, but I promise it's not. I have been focusing on becoming the best version of myself mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and um, obviously we know that things like exercise and nutrition are important, but here's some things that I really had to pray like, am I becoming the best version of myself? Okay, so when I was in grad school, I was really lazy with my physical appearance. I'm just gonna put it out there. I had no time. I was working a million jobs and in a double major program and I literally had to set alarms to shower because I just was so pressed for time. But this was like a couple year period of time where I had like no free time and so I would roll out of bed every morning to go to work and put my hair in a little lazy bun right on top of my head and I never wore makeup and I just, I was just lazy. And it's not that I was lazy, I just didn't have time. But it took me several years after graduation to kind of get out of that lazy roll out of bed mode to where I'm actually putting a little more time and effort into getting ready. And it's not that you have to be so focused on your physical appearance, but like, If I want a guy who takes care of himself and looks attractive and dresses nicely and takes care of his hair hair and beard, you know, whatever, then I can't be someone who rolls out of bed every day. So for me, I just had to stop being lazy and start putting time into my appearance. Okay, I will let that point rest itself. Um, Another thing that I really wanted to focus on was my mental and emotional well-being. Um, When I did finish grad school, I was kind of a hot mess which after you've been in an intense season of study for so long, I was in college for six years and I had completed an associate's, a bachelor's and two masters in that time frame. It was just such a crunch mode that it's like, it took me a couple years to really unwind from that season. And there was also just a lot of things that began surfacing in my heart when I finally had time to breathe. And I realized that I had some internal work that I needed to get done. I just felt unstable for a while. And so a while back, I took a season to go through inner healing and counseling, Christian counseling, high five for Christian counselors, and just work through things. And um, there's a couple other things that I really needed to take time to address, which I have. One was I came from a family with a lot of divorce and God has done so much redemption in my family. But the reality is no matter, no matter like how good you have it, there's just wounds from childhood, especially if you have been through divorce or abuse or sexual trauma or whatever your story is. Um, There's just areas where 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 we can realize, oh, this is affecting me. I thought I dealt with this years ago, but because I had come from a divorced family, as an adult, I, I started realizing that I was afraid of getting married. I was afraid of having children. There were just fears I had, and I was like, what is this? And then I recognized um, that I had things that I hadn't dealt with from my childhood. And so counseling helped with that. And just really bringing things before the Lord, like, God, I need you to heal my heart in this area. 
um, because I believe you want me to have a happy and healthy marriage. I believe you want me to be a happy mother settled in her home with children. And like, there's a mind block. I can't even vision that for my future. So I need you to heal me and to give me your desires for my life um, because I want to be a wife and a mom. I just, I can't picture that. And so it's just been a steady journey of God um, healing me and giving me his desires for uh, marriage and family because there were a number of years where I really didn't want that. But thankfully, I'm at a place now where I look forward to being a wife and a mom. And that's the goodness of God because he has healed my heart and given me a desire for family. Okay, so I'm going to move on here. So just reiterating, you want to be at your best place Spirit, soul, and body. I'll touch the spiritual component in a minute, but um, the physical and soul things. I mean, there's so many things we can do that as we pray, God, how can I prepare? I believe God's going to show you um, the things that you need to take care of so that you are truly in a healthy place to enter into marriage. Water break. <laughs> okay. Okay. This is kind of random, but I really felt like God wanted me to say something about this. If you want to prepare for marriage, don't isolate yourself. I don't know what it is about the millennial generation, but so many people have church hurt, this and that hurt, and they've isolated themselves from community and from accountability. And I just want to tell you, get plugged into a local church. Find a place in your community to serve and get involved. You need people who can call you on your crap. You need people who can encourage you when you're down and you need people can, who can pull you up when you fall down. So don't be isolated because that makes you uh, um, pray. That makes you a target for the enemy. The, the Bible says the enemy goes about like a roaring lion seeking who he can devour. And I'm just telling you, when you're in community, um, you're protected. Not only that, when you're married, you're not going to be isolated. So you need to know how to do life with people. Okay, that's all I'm going to say on that part. Which kind of segues into the next point, which is to hang out with families and children. Do, 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 do. You know, in my flesh, I have a propensity towards self-centeredness and um, towards independence. But um, in this season, I really have been trying to be more intentional about being around family and babysitting and nannying and being with kids because you have to... You just have to see godly models sometimes. So for years, I've been like, God, show me who those families are who are doing it well. I want to observe them and take notes because that I'm going to pray for that in my life. So hang out with families and kids. It's really good for you. For a long time, my jobs were very administrative and very task-oriented. But in this season, God has actually shifted my work. I have been nannying, working with a boy with special needs. And I know that God has been using this nanny job just to prepare my heart for motherhood and just to teach me how to continually go to God in prayer for, for just his wisdom on how to work with this child. And of course, I know that when I am married and have kids, I will constantly be asking God for help on how to handle different situations. So I would just say be around families and children because that will kind of prepare your heart for what's to come. Um, Another thing I've been doing, I'm a reader. No, I have not read all of these books. They, a lot of them were given to me. Read books on relationships and marriage and conflict resolution, all the things. Some of these books are definitely for after we say I do, but some of them are for the dating phase. Anyways, I've read a couple of them. I've been um, going through this kind of prayer journal, prayers for your future husband. It's just meditating on scripture and really just preparing your heart to enter into a relationship. So, hey, books, that's kind of self, um, self-explanatory. Okay, I have two more things I wanna share with you. <sighs> the last two are the most important. I need a water break for this. I swear making YouTube videos makes me more, more aware than ever of how addicted to water I am. Oh, well. Okay. We all know the cliche statement that your husband or wife cannot satisfy you, that only God can. But it's not a cliche statement. I mean, 
it, it's truth. And um, in this season of preparing to get married, I feel like God has been drawing me away, kind of like a honeymoon with Jesus, if you will, where I've just been trying to draw as close to God as possible because the reality is I know we all feel this emptiness on the inside of us and we're just longing for fulfillment and happiness and joy and we always look to the next thing like once I get the next job once I'm married once I have kids once I have my house whatever it is then I will be happy but but nothing but God has the ability to fill us and so I just want to encourage you in your loneliness, draw near to God because I understand what it's like to be lonely. I have been intentionally single for 10 years, choosing not to date around and um, it gets lonely. Like, like I'm just going to be honest with you and I travel a lot domestically and internationally for work and it gets really lonely, like just being a party of one most of the time. Um, but in that time, I have to choose at a heart level, God, I'm not giving into the loneliness. I'm going to draw near to you and I give you this time. I give you myself in this season as a living sacrifice. I'm not going to be depressed or give into the loneliness, but I'm going to give you my time and I'm going to enjoy fellowship with you. And I'm telling you guys God has met with me in ways that are so sweet and special. And I know when the season changes, I won't have the kind of free time I have right now. So I want to encourage you, prepare for marriage, but don't hyper obsess about it because God is the lover of our souls. And we're married for a period of time for our earthly years, but but we're united to God for eternity. And so he has to be our first love. We can't go into marriage thinking that our husband or wife is going to fill our tank and that they're going to meet our every need because they weren't designed to do that. And you'll set yourself up for failure if you're looking to another person to fulfill that longing. So bring your emptiness, bring your loneliness, bring your free time to God and just say, God, here I am fill me up. And um, I believe God wants to meet with you. And I, as I have fasted and drawn near to God, God reminds me, your husband will be a gift, but he cannot be your everything. And it helps kind of temper the expectation that I'm not looking to him to be my everything. I'm looking to God. Um, the last thing I want to say in preparing for marriage is just the idea of patience. <sighs> And this has probably been the hardest part for me, honestly. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you can probably relate with what I'm about to say. When I was a teenager, <laughs> I thought I was really mature for my age. We can all look back and be like, you were a ding dong. <laughs> you like, we can all look back at our earlier selves and be like, yeah, you had no idea how immature you really were. But I always thought I would get married young. I mean, I was so ambitious. I had my first part apartment when I was 18 and I graduated college early. Like I was I was ambitious and I thought because I'm doing all these things, I'm ready to get married early. But but God knows the timing and seasons of our lives. Like before we ever took a breath, before we ever took our first breath, he had a plan for our lives and he knows the best season to bring you and your spouse together. And sometimes his best season for you is when you're young. And sometimes it's when you're not so young. And um, I quit dating around when I was 17. I'm 27 now. And that's 10 years, 10 years of waiting. I mean, it may not seem like a long time to someone who's in their 40s, 50s, or 60s that's waiting, but I've... I have I have literally not kissed a person in 10 years. And I'm just going to get real with you because I feel like shallow talks don't help you out. I want to be vulnerable with you because I know what it's like to struggle waiting. I know what it's like to be thirsty and be like, okay, the next hot guy that walks in the door, I'm going to grab and make out with him. Like I know what it's like to have desires and I know what it's like to look longingly at other families and be like, when will my day come? And to go out to eat by yourself, to travel by yourself, to 
have no one to come home to at night to be thinking, man, I'm lonely. Who can I call and talk to? Like, I, I understand what it's like to be a party of one. But patience and long suffering, they will pay off. Um, I remember a while back, I was with a friend of mine and she had um, just met her, her husband and I was just telling her, I'm so tired of waiting. Like, I'm just done. I've waited for so long and I'm just thirsty. Like, I just want to settle for the next guy who gives me a compliment. I, I think I told her like, yeah, the next guy that walks in the door, I just want to kiss him. Like, sometimes you just reach this point of desperation where you're willing to compromise and you just become a buffoon. And I've probably had a few moments like that over the last 10 years where it's like, ugh, I'm so done with this waiting game. Like, when will it ever end? And you feel like God has forgotten you. Um, and I was just telling my friend how lonely and desperate I felt. And I I just, I will never forget what happened next. She, she started crying and she she looked at me from across the table. We were at a diner, I think. And um, she was just saying, Sheridan, I wish I had waited like you. Um, you're so close. Don't give up now. I wish I had waited like you. And she told me a story of how she had grown so tired of waiting for the man that God was preparing her for that she settled and she hooked up with a guy. Um, and... Like, right after that hookup, she ended up meeting her husband. And she carried the regret of that hookup into her relationship with her husband because she didn't realize that her husband was much closer than she thought. She was just so tired of waiting. Like me, she wasn't like a spring chicken. She wasn't a 20-year-old. Um, and she was just so sorrowful that she didn't wait just a little bit longer because I think she actually started dating her husband within like a matter of weeks or months after this hookup. I mean, it was so close. And she said, I wish I would have waited. And so she encouraged me, Sheridan, you are so close. Just wait. Don't settle. God has his best for you and it's worth waiting for. She said, if I had known my husband was coming, I would have never hooked up with this guy. Um, and, and that put conviction back inside of me. And, and I realized I was, I was, I was at a crossroads where I was either going to compromise or I was going to wait for God's best. And I realized it is worth the wait. I have no, no idea how close my husband is, but I know God has promised me a husband and I'm not going to settle for less than God's best. And it wasn't like I was tempted to just have sex with a random person. That, that wasn't where my temptation was. Where my temptation was, um, was compromising. Um, maybe some guy was giving me attention and I knew he wasn't really God's best for me, but but my version of settling would have been giving into that temptation because it felt special to be noticed by somebody. Um, and there, there have been several opportunities along the way to date someone that would have been good. I just always knew this is not who God has for me. And so when my friend told me that, I wish I would have waited like you. It was God's mercy and it gave me the ability to wait more. And that was still a while back. And I'm still waiting. But God has continued to confirm his promises to me. And he's made himself so real to me. And I just know that God holds my heart and he holds my seasons. And that in his faithfulness, he will bring my husband and I together at the right time. And I think that time is soon. But I have to choose to live my days with great intentionality. Um, you know the parable of the wise virgins in the Bible? There were ten virgins. Five were wise, five were foolish. Um, the bridegroom was coming, but he was delayed in coming. And so they all fell asleep waiting for him. Anyways, the five wise virgins had brought oil in their lamps. And the five foolish virgins didn't. And so when the bridegroom came... Those who had oil in their lamps, they were ready to meet the bridegroom, but those who didn't have oil in their lamps left to go get oil, but then the bridegroom came when they were gone. 
And the point of that parable is be ready, be watching, be waiting, have oil in your lamps. And so in the same way that we need to have that proactive um, uh, waiting patience for, for our heavenly bridegroom, we also need to be that way about waiting for our husband. Don't be lazy. Don't be a flirt. Don't compromise. You need to keep oil in your lamp and you need to be ready. You need to be preparing yourself and watching for him and waiting and praying. Don't fall asleep. Even if it seems like he's delaying, keep oil in your lamp because when he comes, you don't want to be found off with some other guy. You don't want to be found off flirting or getting lost in the trap of online dating or or whatever it is. You want to know I have prepared and I have waited well. And I can honestly say that with a strong conviction. To the best of my abilities, I have prepared and I have waited well for marriage. And I know that I have something precious to offer my husband because I haven't been giving myself away to 10 other guys. And so, and if you have a past or maybe a present of just messing around with guys or just a lot of brokenness. Listen, there is no condemnation. God can forgive you and wipe your slate clean in a moment. And I would just encourage you to give all that to God and to let him take you into a season of inner healing. Because there was a time in my life um, where I wasn't walking with the intentionality that I am now. Um, I can link another video It's talking about sex and purity and saving yourself from marriage. But there was a time where I did not value my body or my purity or anything like that. But God has taught me how to live differently. And because he's taught me, I live differently. So um, in closing, I just want to encourage you. You are worth God's best. And so is the man you're going to marry. He is worth God's best. So become the best for him. Don't just expect God to bring you the best without you becoming something of value to offer that other person. And also, I've had to tell myself this, so I'll tell you this. Don't don't seek perfection. Like, you're never going to be perfectly ready for anything. It's not that I'm going to have a perfect body or a perfect, I don't know, bank account or a perfect life circumstances when I meet my husband. It's not about that. It's just about doing your best to really honor God and honor the person you're going to marry and and taking an honest approach at preparing. So get rid of the perfectionist mentality. I mean, gosh, I probably wish I was a little bit skinnier or gosh, I wish I had more money in the bank account or I wish I was farther along in my career or I wish I owned a home or a better car. Like, But some of those things, they're just shallow. At the end of the day, God looks at the heart. Man looks at external things and God looks at the heart. So preparing for marriage is not just about having all these external things. It's about having a heart that's really yielded to God and a heart that's ready to walk into a marriage to serve and not to be served. So with that, I am going to close this out. Um, I'm going to pray for you guys. I would love it if you'd let me know in the comments what you are doing to prepare for marriage or if you are already married what you did to prepare, or maybe you have some other advice. And if you have a prayer request, feel free to let me know. I will have my Instagram link down below. So feel free to send me a private message if you need to. Just know that I am in this journey with you guys. I don't have it all figured out. This is not expert advice. This is obviously advice from someone who's never been married. But I like to um, pray and just do whatever God puts on my heart. So thanks for watching. Okay, Jesus. I thank you for the guys and gals that are watching this video today. God, you know their desire to be married, and I believe it is a desire you have given them. And I thank you that you are the one who put the desire there to fulfill it, not to leave us waiting and wanting, but you put the desire there to fulfill it. And so I just bless them, and I thank you for giving them patience that it is worth the wait. God, would you speak to each of us how we can prepare for marriage, how we can prepare to be the husbands and the wives that you have called us to be. And God, for those who have 
maybe a broken past. Maybe they've been divorced or maybe they have sexual sins or maybe they've been abused. God, I thank you that your freedom, your mercy, your healing and your forgiveness is theirs if they will just receive it. So I ask you to speak to them. Show them that you are the way, the truth, the life and you came to set them free and give them a new name. I just really feel like God wants some of you to know it doesn't matter if you've been divorced or been through really broken relationships. God wants to give you a new slate and he wants to give you a new new future. And I've seen that happen in my own family where people who have been through divorces, this, that, and the other, God brought them through a season of healing and then gave them a new spouse that was just such a blessing to them. So I just want you to know your past doesn't define you. Your past doesn't define you. God defines you. And he says you get a new start. So receive it as a gift from God. You couldn't earn it. I can't earn it. But it's a gift from God. Marriage is a gift from God. So receive it. All right. I love you guys. If you're new to this channel, I just ask you to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you can get future content. And if you have a topic you would like me to talk about, let me know. Okay, this video has been almost 30 minutes. Wowzer. All right, talk to you guys soon. Bye.